Hello and welcome back. Today we are looking at the Ballistica Prime. Now, this has been quite overshadowed for the simple fact that a few days after this was released with the Hydroid Prime Access, we got this wonderful, wonderful Arca Schizo, Schizco, something, a corpus pistol that wrecked, and now people are sort of looking back on this and going, well, what's the point of it? And in truth, the actual general answer to that is none. Um, so in a nutshell, is this worth it? Um, no, sadly. And I hate to actually give things a bad review, and despite my personal emotions and bias towards this weapon, I have tried finding a few people on the discords I am part of to actually get like a decent bit of feedback of this weapon to see if people liked it, what people liked about it, what people didn't like about it. I set a bit of a challenge, if you're going to like send me some information on it, you've got to add two pros and two cons just to see if there was a fair bit of leeway with the weapon, whether it was largely loved or hated, and to be honest, the overall gist I got of this weapon is mastery fodder. So, that how you want to take it is entirely up to you. However, that aside, this weapon is a straight upgrade of the Ballistica. It's a mastery rank 7 weapon, it's 20% critical hit chance, 20% status chance. Its damage is a little bit more evened out across the impact punch and slash when compared to Ratica Ballistica, which is going to be really its main competition, to be fair. I mean, that's what a lot of people would have assumed with Ratica Cernos and Cernos Prime. But here we have a comparison of the two. You can do some straight number swappings there. However, the thing that really does stand out for me straight away is the massive amount of puncher the Ratica Ballistica has over the Ballistica Prime. Now, there is one thing that has actually been really irking me about this weapon. When Cyanoid Heliocore came out, everyone was moaning that the little shadow thing that you get from the charge attack was useless. It was pointless. When Inaros was released, people didn't really see the point of having the little sand clone because it was useless. Apparently DE hasn't got this message, so now when you do a charge attack with this weapon and upon killing that enemy within 50 meters of yourself, so if you get to sniping you're not going to get it, you spawn a little clone. This little clone is again useless. It does nothing. All shots take 4 ammo, which is really really annoying me or it's simply the fact that it gives you 32 ammo oh that's a nice good number for a pistol every shot then takes four regardless of whether it's the charged or just the non-charged but that is a nice bonus actually having being able to fire this weapon without it being charged so that is quite nice however a lot of the time I really can't see the point of charging it. It does double damage, as you will see here. These are fully charged shots into the face of a level 150 Heavy Gunner. I like my level 150s, so screw it. And admittedly, it does do a fair whack of damage, but in case you can't tell, this is pretty damn slow and pretty damn boring. So he's dead, and then we can just go after a quick reload. I mean, that guy, the shadow thing there, it's doing nothing. It lasts for like seven seconds, so whatever. And then you can just spam. But I would kind of prefer if the actual non charge shots were just, you know, one friggin' bullet. But key seda, seda, whatever. But overall, I actually don't really rate this weapon, and I've tried to actually get a build on it which actually does make it workable, using Hornet Strike, Pistol Pestilence, Prime Target Cracker, Jolt, Primed Heated Charge, Lethal Torrent, Primed Pistol Gambit, and Barrel Diffusion, but I'm sad to say, and I've looked at other builds as well, and tested them out, it doesn't really, it literally plateaus at like level 60, and then from there it's just downhill. Anyway, that's me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you pretty darn soon. ta -ra.